So here, instead of I writing a lot of code manually so that you don't have to really see my bad typing practice, I'm just going to copy paste some of the code which I have already written for my details report so that you can easily see and understand how things work. And this time, the logic of this detail report is nothing big deal. It's very, very fairly straightforward code. So what I'm going to do, let me quickly hop to the Excel Automation Reporting System uh, code base and then I'm going to just stop it. And here for the details report.aspx, I'm just going to paste a few lines of code right into here. And you can see there is a few, few lines of code. And basically it's going to display you the actual data binding stuff here for the particular grid. And you can see there is one small change which I need to do is nothing but this master page dot master. This should be good enough. All right. And then we have to also add the code behind for this detail report dot ASPX. So I'm just going to go to the, and then I'm going to just paste the code right here, which I have already written. And let's add some of the missing references because that's going to create some of the trouble. All right, seems to be good enough. And it is not DB utilities. It is DB helper. Just going to save it. All right, we're pretty good to go now. Now let's quickly show the demo and then I will explain you what this code is actually doing. So let me quickly run this code. Hopefully it should work fine because I just copy pasted. So remember in our previous video, the Ono 7, even if the parent cycle was Ono 7, the detail report was empty. But this time if I do a Ono 7, it should work fine. So let's go to the home page. And if I click the Ono 7, you can see that we have a pretty neat looking detailed report this time. See, these are the value that we inserted in our previous video for this particular test feature. So there is also an option to expand and minimize. If I click this particular test feature, it will automatically expand and minimize based upon the clicking that you are doing here. And it will show you the total steps which is executed. It is like 15 and it is kind of dynamic. So whatever value is out there, it will automatically calculate this for you and it will show you right here. And you can add, keep on adding the feature, different types of features right into this place and it will automatically add the feature name as well. For example, if I go to our query and instead of test feature, let's add this as new feature. And then let's say if I execute this two times and now if I refresh this, you can see we have one more feature called new feature here. So it will automatically add those different kinds of feature into the detailed reporting system for you. Right. So this is how you can make use of your details report. So now you have a pretty much close to all the fully built reporting system for you at your disposal. And you can make use of this reporting system for any kind of automation testing that you are doing. So this is how you can make use of it, guys. And this is what is the actual Excel automation reporting system. Right. So let's quickly see how the code is looking. So what I'm going to do, the implementation is pretty straightforward and simple. All I'm doing is I'm just getting the value from the query string, the parent cycle ID. I'm just passing it right here into the query because I have to fetch the TBL detailed report based upon the parent cycle ID. So I'm just going to pass the parent cycle ID here and that's going to return as the particular table. And then I'm going to execute the query as usual. And then I'm going to just bind that particular data into my grid, which is nothing but the detailed grid that you are seeing right there. And there is a pre-render option and this pre-render event is actually performing a lot of operation. So what it's doing is basically this is where your, the blue thing is coming. This particular row with the test feature, the blue color and the new feature, right? So this is happening actually from our pre-render method. So this is what is doing. So if there is any failed test case, it will also show you in the red color. So for example, this time, let's say I'm going to insert something called as failed in my new test, uh, new feature. Let's insert two failures. And if I go to this page and maybe if I refresh this and oops, it should show the failed as red. I don't know why it's not displaying. 
maybe something has changed in the code behind uh, maybe the grid value is kind of different so all right so it's coming to the grid the cell value of three and let's see if the really the cell value of three is actually containing the failed result hmm I don't think the fail value of three is actually containing the failed result I guess the the particular row is being changed mm -mm -mm. let's quickly see all right so it seems like cell value of four has got the particular value and that's the reason the rendering is not really uh, making the real sense so this time ooh, my god it is rendering in a different place sorry I will just stop this particular execution change this particular color and now if I execute this particular code hopefully this time it should work fine there we go it will also show you the red color for the failed and you can make it as a bold if you want or if you want to show the red color for the whole step you can also show that so you can keep on doing any kind of changes for this reporting system and it's completely extendable you can do any kind of change you want so this is how guys we can make use of our ASP.NET and customizable code to perform and write the Excel Automation Reporting System UI. And I guess this ends our section with all the different kinds of uh, operations that we need to do in our UI. In the next section, we'll be actually talking about working with a web service to perform the operation. Thank you.